happy vlogmas y'all y'all know what time it is i am doing a video every day for the month of december decided to do this at the last minute but um i'm gonna give it a try in today's video i want to discuss nonfiction november i read two awesome i mean awesome memoirs in the month of november and i must talk about them the memoir i want to discuss is maddie c's boy the shelly suit i can't talk y'all and look it's vlogmas so no major editing going on let's let's get through this <laughs> let's get through this i'm so tickled okay Maddie C, Maddie C's Boy, The Shelly Stewart Story by Don Keith. And this is a young Shelly Stewart right here. I was drawn to this book um, a few years ago, actually. I found it in a library sale. And I don't know, just the title of it in this picture is what first grabbed my attention. And then when I saw who it was, I'm an 80s baby. So I think he was probably ending his um, radio career around the time that I was born or late 80s, early 90s. But Shelly Stewart, here's a, a more current picture, was a radio personality here in Birmingham, Alabama, who got his start in the 50s and he was still on the radio in the 80s. He's won several awards and his story is the perfect example of the Drake song started from the bottom that we hear. When I tell you this man started from the bottom and made something of himself and that is why I enjoy memoirs. Um, the one thing that I did not like is I, I don't, well, I guess, is it considered a memoir since someone else is telling the story? But I like to hear the story from the person. By this one being written by someone else, this is Mr. Stewart, Shelly Stewart, telling his story to this author. And sometimes to me that, that draws a disconnect um, but you know what? It it was still excellent. Do you hear me? Here's a picture in here, an old picture of that's Shelly Stewart's mother. So Shelly Stewart was born in the 1930s here in Birmingham, Alabama. At the young age of five years old, he and his brother, who was seven, witness the murder of his mother by his dad. His dad hits his mother, and this happens within the very first few pages of the book, um, hits his mother in the chest with an ax. She falls out the window, lands in a tree. He calls the police, and um, but it's the 1930s. Another black person killing another black person. There was no arrest nothing was ever done. In fact, his dad never went to jail. In fact, him and his brothers, because he was five, the oldest brother was seven. Um, there was a toddler that was maybe two years old and then a baby baby who was maybe six months old. Okay. She left behind four boys. And who do they entrust those boys with? That dad. Um, that's all I'm going to say about his childhood, but just know that this man at the, after so many horrible things, um, that he struggled, really, he was on his own from the age of six, really after his mother was killed at five, he was on his own really and truly. And his mother had, um, two other sisters living in this area um, one was not helpful at all. The other one, she was into showy stuff and I won't even go into that. I really would want people, I want people to read this book and the treat 
that I found that I didn't even know until I cracked the book open to finally read it and it's been on my shelf for two plus years is that it's a signed copy and it has this little slip in here that says um, that it's certified, that it's authenticated that these signatures, that's Mr. Shelley Stewart and Mr. Dunn Keith, these um, is signed by them. So I can't share it with anyone. Uh, Mr. Stewart is well into his 80s now. And I told my mom she would. this is a book that she would love. But because it's signed, she's not getting this copy. She's going to have to find her own. Or I might try to find it for her. Because she definitely... And um, my dad definitely as well remember him from the radio here in Birmingham. If you're here in Birmingham, you remember Mr. Shelly Stewart or what he went by, um, Shelly the Playboy. Um, one thing, after being on the radio and he was young and he went to some of the, my, he didn't graduate from there, but he did attend for three years my high school that I attended. Um civil rights movement he talked a lot about the importance of the civil rights movement and the importance that radio played in the movement here in birmingham alabama you know this was a huge civil rights um hub that went on and um many of you i'm sure remember pictures from the children's march in the 60s with the hose pipes and the dogs, those pictures are forever ingrained in our memory. Um, so this one, he talks about that basically in this and the role that him and other local DJs play by sending out codes with their music and the things that they would say to let people know about civil rights meetings and things like that. So it was really good. It was a history lesson and you get to learn about a awesome man and his role that he played in history. So if you happen to find this one in um, your library or it becomes available, I, I highly recommend this one. This is a good book, Telling History and um, just so much, so much. I don't want to spoil it, but the things that he went through I cried at one point, especially when he was a child, telling the story of what he went through and how those who were post, supposed to protect him did not. Yeah. So, yeah, that's this one. And so I see I have talked almost eight minutes now. So what I'm going to do is save the other memoir, which is a new release and just recently won an award. I'm going to save that one for tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that one. So that's all I have for today. If you want to talk more, if by chance you have read this book, please let me know in the comment section below. And that's it for me today, y'all. I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. Bye.